Get ready because we're making the bacon, bacon cheddar burger from my restaurant, Sandburgers, four different ways. And by four different ways, I mean with our burger blend, brisket, short rib and chuck, so good. Ground chicken, delicious. Ground salmon, amazing. And with the Beyond Burger option. And we're making bacon onion jam. That's the double bacon part. Bacon, bacon. So the first B, bacon, is this kind of bacon. The second B, bacon, is the bacon onion jam that you want to put on everything. And we're making crispy onions to go on top of all of them. Aren't we a bunch of little the hungry kids here today? Everybody's getting a burger. Everybody. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> That was part-time Chance. Which, by the way, let me just clear up right now. Chance's name uh, showed up on a recent episode of the Barbecue Central podcast, the number one most downloaded barbecue podcast anywhere, because Chance was making fun of the Barbecue Central podcast host Greg Rempe's dislike, hate of onions. And somebody wrote in and said Chance's comment was funny, but he also referred to Chance as part-time. Chance is not part-time. If anybody here is part-time, it's me. Chance is 100% full-time, and he works like he's 1,000% full-time. Right, Chance? Yeah. Right. So uh, let's get on to the bacon onion jam first. I already have some bacon sizzling away beside me to uh, cut the time a bit. All right, so here's my bacon, obviously diced up. I've got it sauteing, and I say when it starts to get foamy like this, it's about three quarters of the way done. Now's when we want to add other stuff, but we don't want this excess grease. So let's take out most of it. So I just pull it off to one side. And if I can do this with one hand, two, I'm just going to take this grease and put it in a little container. And I'm going to save this because I'm telling you when you're making eggs or mushrooms or onions, a little bacon grease is never going to be a bad thing. Grilled cheese instead of butter. It's all good. Okay, most of it's out. Back on the heat. And now we will add about a half of a red onion. And that will look like this. <laughs> so we'll mix this through. Obviously diced. You want everything pretty small. We're making a jam-like substance. So no giant pieces of anything. And this will now get, you know, three, four minutes just to start to soften before we uh, add anything extra. Okay, we're looking beautiful, softened, nice. Now we're gonna add some garlic like this, boom. By the way, this recipe is on my website. We'll put a link below. I'm making uh, like a half of a recipe's worth, which is still a lot, but I think you'll find once you make this, you wanna put this shit on everything. Thank you for the line, Frank's Red Hot. And when it starts to get fragrant, we add our next ingredient, and that is about a half of a large tomato diced up like this. Mix this through. Now we'll let everything start to soften. This gets about, oh, I don't know, you know, uh, on sort of low medium, about uh, 10 minutes. And by the way, not showing off or anything, but when I flip like this, I want to show you that it's less about wrist and more about the movement because I can make that happen without lifting the pan by just pushing it forward and pulling it back. Watch. Same thing happening. You don't need super human skills to do that. Just a fast flip motion. Don't even have to lift it. Okay, 10 minutes and we carry on. When the color is deepened, and it's starting to look spectacular. We add the last of our ingredients. We'll begin with two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, about a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne, nice pinch of salt and pepper, and about a quarter cup of apricot jam. And we mix. And when it's fully incorporated, we leave it on the heat to simmer away for about 15 minutes. And in that time, we'll make some crispy onions and deal with our salmon. We're 
we're making crispy onions. And we've done it before, and you should know how to do it because it's a great thing. You cut an onion thin, you toss it in flour and cornstarch, you deep fry it, they come out amazing, you put them on a burger or, or a steak or a sandwich, whatever you want. The difference today is that we have a new mandolin to use. Mandolins are not expensive, and you may remember we threw out our last one because it broke and it was a piece of shit. Okay, don't buy this whatever stupid... Oh my God, I'm crying. I'm gonna smell like onions for a year. This is not a, a piece of shit. I don't think it was expensive either. Might've been 30 bucks or something. Just wait till you see how great this guy is. It's gonna make our onions perfect. So before I show you this thing, and by the way, we're not pimping this. In fact, I won't even show you the name. How's that? I just wanna tell you that it comes with these different, these different blades that shred, that do, I guess, like would make like waffle fries and God knows what the hell that does. But here's the cool thing, because we're only using this straight blade today. This knob here lets you um, change the depth, the thickness of what it is you're cutting, which I think is pretty cool. Now this one, pay attention, is gonna bring up another set of blades here that let you now take a potato and cut it into this size fry pieces if you want, or smaller by using this one. I think it's pretty good. Look, a mandolin is a pretty cool thing. And for us today, we want this. And I want my onions fairly thin. So I'm gonna dial this guy up to, I think about there. And now we take a half of an onion. I'm gonna cut this little dirty end part off like this. And then we're just gonna do this. And we should be doing it, if we're smart, with the blade guard, which is this, you poke, and then you're not gonna ruin your fingers. And then you just go like this. Oh, no, that's too big, hold on. Let's see if we're at the right. It's pretty thin, that's gonna be nice. So let's just make a bunch of that. Oh yeah, this is a good guy. Could be enough. Oh, come on. Give me a break, you know how great this is gonna be? There is a certain amount of moisture in here that I'm gonna to wanna to squeeze out, but a little bit more, we'll do that, and then we'll get them frying. Okay, we're good there. Now I guess the best way to do this is by hand. So I'm gonna scoop them all up, as many as I can. I'll take them over to the sink, and we squeeze. That liquid, now running into my watch, would be the death of your, oh, how would be the death of your crispy onions. Okay, I'll keep them back here. Oh God, these are gonna be so good. All right, let's get our flour ready and we're almost there. All right, so for the next step, we take our beautifully sliced onions and we drop them into buttermilk like this. And everybody gets coated. Uh, and you can let them soak for a bit if you want. Honestly, you don't really need to. This is more about what's on the outside of the onion so the flower part sticks beautifully. So I've probably got enough in here. Oh, what the hell, let's throw these guys in, right? What am I gonna do, not make them? Okay, once everybody's coated, put these guys off to the side, we'll build our flower part, and we start frying. We've talked about house aperitifs before. The founders of house created this deliciousness because they wanted a better way to drink. They were tired of food coloring and fake flavors and all the sugar. Now they have a brand new flavor and this is grapefruit jalapeno. And like all their flavors, 18% alcohol, easier to drink, but way better to drink. Look, I'm a cocktail guy, I'm not a wine guy, and I like a variety of things, and House has made it really simple for me to enjoy delicious, interesting, unique cocktails that come right out of the bottle. So pour it on the rocks, enjoy it like that, or in this case of the grapefruit jalapeno, we're gonna make a crazy House Paloma with this one. We start by rimming our glass with some grapefruit, great way to go, and then into kosher salt, and if that's not beautiful, I don't know what is. Next, some ice. And then we add our house grapefruit jalapeno. A nice pour. Tiny splash of mezcal for some beautiful smokiness. We top it off with a piece of grapefruit, squeezed and dropped, along with some lime, squeezed and dropped. And look at that. Oh my goodness. How happy would your guests be if they walked in and you went, here, have one of these. Mm. 
It's fantastic. It's light. It's absolutely refreshing. You get the grapefruit, little bite of the jalapeno, and it pinch, a tinch of smokiness from the mezcal. What's beautiful about all the house aperitifs is that you can have them by themselves, on the rocks, with the mixer, with citrus. Honestly, it's a better way to drink. Try house now, get 15% off your order when you use my code STCG and click the link in the description below. And then you too will be standing around doing this. And the flower component looks like this relatively equal parts of flour and cornstarch then a nice seasoning of kosher salt and pepper and this we mix i find a whisk particularly useful here perfect stay right there let me bring back the onions and then we'll do this we take some we squeeze out most of the buttermilk because we don't need it. We'll drop them in, separating as we go, as best as we can as we go. And then because I'm using two hands and that's not gonna be good with all this milk on my fingers, I'll quickly wash, quickly dry, and then do this. You wanna separate as you go. We don't want a clump, we want individual like this, it's perfect. And when you got a big batch in here that's separated and floured and ready, Let's get over to the fryer, shall we? Boys, fryer, shall we? Yeah. Hell yes. So I take a big handful over to the oil and I separate them as I go, like that. Oil's about 365, 370. Nice. Maybe a couple more I can add. I don't really want to overdo it though, so let's just call it that for now. I will come in with a pair of tongs and just sort of separate these guys. So there's less of a chance of clumping. And we're just waiting for them to become gorgeous. And I think as you can see, we're very close. And when they look like that, love this, man. We give them a shake, because the extra oil is not helpful. Throw on a paper towel, like this. We stand back and look on with pleasure at what we've created here, which is just freaking gorgeous. Gonna be amazing on these. We turn to our salmon and we're almost there. So we're all set with the patties. We've got chicken, we've got our beef blend, and we've got our beyond. What we're missing is our salmon. We're gonna do that right now. Into our processor, I'm putting eight ounces of salmon filet, skin off. We make a four ounce patty, and this is very simple. Uh, done. That's all it is. So we'll take out the blade. We'll get this into two equal, relatively equal size balls. We'll have one. I think I need to make that guy a little bigger. Very simple. There we go. This guy gets a little bit more. And it doesn't hold together well like this, but because we're going to smash them, by the time that happens, we're going to be in good shape. Let me clean up my hands. Get rid of the processor when we come back. We're making burgers, folks. We're making four different types of the BBC. The bacon, bacon, cheddar. Not the big <laughs> All right, before we start, can you just look at what this bacon onion jam has become? I mean, imagine this on the bottom bun before anything else. Holy S. That's gonna bring some flavor that is gonna be hard to forget in the best way possible. All right, but first, we're gonna throw our buns on because everything's gonna happen fast. So we've got our classic brioche bun. I've buttered it a little bit. These are all gonna go on. We'll get them ready and we'll take them off. And you're gonna wanna keep an eye on them because they're gonna happen fast and you really don't wanna burn these. The landing spot for these delicious burgers cannot be jacked up. You can see it's not taking long to get some color on here. Getting there, almost there, close to being there, almost there, almost there, almost there. Is this getting annoying? Mm -hmm. Almost there. Oh yeah, these are gorgeous. And yes, a brioche bun has a lot of butter in it, but adding butter now does this gorgeousness and this gorgeousness. So let's take these guys off and get ready for our patties. C'est fantastique. 
Hey, shite. There we go. First up, oil, avocado, and it's chosen, of course. We'll spread this around. And then come the patties. So salmon. Hello. Beyond. Or beef blend and chicken. And now, because it's a smash situation, we want to do that. So we're going to go like this. Beautiful. Oh, I made it too close. Crap. I wasn't thinking. I'm going to need more room. Damn it. Why did I do this? I forgot. So you guys go over here. You come in here. Beautiful. Chicken. And we'll do the beef right there. Perfect, and now we'll season. Yes, of course, salt and pepper, salt and pepper. All these guys, chicken, 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 beef. And while this is happening, I'm gonna put some of the bacon jam on the bottom bun. Don't be cheap. Alan. Alan, don't be cheap. Oh my God, these are gonna be insane. Sorry you're not here, everybody. And then while we're there, stay right there, Chancellor. We're gonna add this, a little bit of lettuce, a little cool crunch, and now our landing spots are ready, and now we can start to flip, starting with our salmon. Look at the crazy color, I love it. Beautiful, beyond. Scrape up, flip over, fabulous. Scrape up, flip over, nice, chicken. Perfect. Beef. And now, everybody gets a piece of white cheddar. Like this, like this. I won't say it every time, because you might get mad. And like this, and there. Fantastic, really fantastic. I'm feeling good about everything right now, folks. All right, these guys are ready, so let's do this. We'll take this guy, we'll put him on his friend here. Come on, buddy, go to your friend. Melt that cheese. Hey, chicken, loving you. And our beef looks like this. Oops, come on. There we go. Now, off we come. Salmon down first. And look, with the least amount of fat, the least amount of shrinkage. Next up, our Beyond, followed by our gorgeous chicken. Ow. And then our beef blend. Ow. Hello, brisket. Hello, short rib. Hello, Chuck. Okay, but we're not done there because here's what we need. We need bacon on all of these. Remember, bacon, bacon. Like this. Like this. Oh, man. I want this so badly right now. I'm not kidding. I want every one of these so badly. And then these guys right here. But wait, don't stop there because now top bun gets a little mayo. Boom, 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 boom. A quick spread like that. But wait, one more thing. Forget about our crispy onions. I'm gonna put a little handful on each. Oh, but the crunch, the taste, the texture. Four burgers, four different insides. I was gonna say four different proteins. That's restaurant terminology. Max doesn't like that terminology. And then we cap. Ladies and gentlemen, my work here is done. Now's the moment that uh, we come to at the end of every episode. Time to taste our hard work. Me, Chance, and Max's hard work. 
The buns are toasty and ready. The bacon onion jam is in place, topped with cool, crispy lettuce. The patties have been cooked, melted cheese on top, bacon on top of that, and crispy onions, mayo on the top bun, and our brioche buns capping all of the nonsense. And I have to taste one. I could taste them all, but I won't. And the one I choose, ladies and gentlemen, is... <whistles> Boom. Chicken. Here, chick, 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 chick. Look at that kid. Look at that. So yes, we've pimped my restaurant, Sandburgers. Yes, we're trying to show you how delicious they are. But the point of today, really, is to show you that while ground beef is amazing in a burger and classic, you do have options, ladies and gentlemen. Really freaking delicious options. Like this chicken kid right here, waiting to be consumed. Okay, before I take a bite, just can you close up on that? Yes, we sell them at uh, Sandburgers. Yes, you can come to San Diego and get one. Yes, you can make this at home. And I'm telling you, change it up. You should. Oh, hell yes, you should. The bacon onion jam is so good. It's juicy, it's tender, it's just damn good. That's what a burger should be. That first bite says to you, eat the whole damn thing right now, son. And I just might. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you haven't subscribed, do it now. If you haven't hit the notification bell, do it after you subscribe. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you want. We're here for you. Right, boys? Yep. You made it to the end of the video. Let's celebrate by subscribing. Subs what he said. Exactly. All right, we got some burgers to eat.